Well, you guys, because our last live was so crazy, we felt like we owed you another live. So this time we have a project for you guys. As you saw in the title, we are going to be showing you guys a really cool technique where we use our retro stamp and we fill it with an inlay pattern, specifically our rose chintz inlay. Yes. So these are the products that we're going to use. These, this is our IOD rose chintz inlay, one of the first inlays and most popular inlays that we have. Yes. And then our very well-loved retro stamp that is so incredibly versatile. Um, and it's got a nice big size so that you can do signage with it. And so we thought, what a fun thing to do for the summer because summer's a great time for DIY for weddings. Yes. And people love to make signs for their weddings. So we thought this would be really fun. Yes. Um, we're doing a custom name sign with it for Willow's Nursery, but you could easily have this say welcome. Um, for the entrance to your wedding or <laughs> anything like that. So right now it's not very impressive. No, not not too not exciting. exciting. Not too exciting, but it will be. Yes. All right. Stay tuned. Let's change your view up so you can get a good overhead view. Yes. Can you guys hear us okay? Let's do that sound check. Make sure. I know twice in one day, Jan. We're just like overachieving today. <laughs> <laughs> Closer okay, I'm in. going to switch the view here switch the view. so you guys can see what we're and working on. Check the view. There we go. There oh, go. that looks good. All right. Yeah, get that nice and tight. And maybe move this up a little bit. Okay, great. Perfect. Okay, so the first things first. The first thing you're going to do is prepare your inlay sheet. So in this case, we used a, the rose chintz. And for this particular technique where you're using the alpha or any small shape that you want to use and fill in with the inlay, you want to choose a pattern that's going to be compact enough that you'll be able to tell what it is within that small space. So this works great. Our blue chintz works great. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a few different inlays actually that would work fabulously. So, and, and some, depending on um, the design, you could use something that's bigger that you'd, in fact, um, I've seen jewelry pieces that have oh, par yeah. paradise the on paradise it. paradise on a little tiny bracelet. Yeah. And so, it looks it goes fabulous. to show you, you know, it really, you can, you can vary that. So that's a general rule, but again, it's bendable. So mm -hmm. have fun with it. As most creative things are. This is true. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to cut out your pieces of inlay ahead of time for each of your letters. One thing you could do if you wanted, and I'm going to show you how I... Actually, I laid the word out on my surface and then I mounted it on the thin mount. If you wanted to go in with a little bit of light ink or something on the back side of your inlay, because that's the appropriate direction, but also because you don't want to be stamping on the side that has the paint because that will then possibly transfer to your design, your project, you don't want that. But you can kind of hover over, see how I can see like, where I want that pattern to fall on this letter, yeah. okay? Now, if you wanted to take kind of a shortcut, you could just do the whole word and you could cut out one big piece and that would save you some time. So depending on the pattern and how it comes through your stamp layout, you can you know, vary that. Use either technique, either one nice big piece or cutting out individual pieces to maximize the amount of pattern within each word. In my case, I just did it kind of actually very haphazardly. I went in, you can see the shapes aren't perfect squares. They're not the shape of the letter or anything. I just went in and I kind of looked up each letter. Here, in fact, let me get this single here. In this case, a W. And I kind of hovered and I said, okay, this piece here is gonna give me a lot of coverage on my W. So I'm gonna just kind of cut in a square like right in there, okay? And then I set those aside. 
oops, exactly. This is right here. After you get all of your pieces cut out, you're going to set those aside because you'll be using those in a little bit. The next thing you're going to do is stamp your letters. So you're going to use the same color of paint for stamping your letters as you are going to use to paint in the letters. So we have this really pretty uh, blue hue. Let me get a... That's going to be so cottagey delicious with the, with the um, rose chins. Yes, it is. I'm going to move these out of our way. Could you set those and actually this aside so I can get this next step on film ski for our viewers. And because I want to, we want to remove these, the ones we pre-prepared for you all at once at the end, I'm going to kind of eyeball where the placement, based on the fact that I know this is the outline of the O, when you do it, you, you're not going to be worrying about that, but I'm going to eyeball it in my lineup and kind of um, get it as close as I can, because again, I want to remove all the paper at, at once. So we're going to use, here we go, a little bit of paint there. This is on a nice thin mount. Everyone's and, shocked that we're on two times in one day. <laughs> <laughs> we're all or nothing, you guys, all or nothing. Okay, and using our brayer, I'm going to go ahead and go right across the surface of my W. Nice. Give me your phone and I'll get on the comments. Okay. okay. Stay up with the comments. All right. Now I'm going to kind of eyeballing it. I think right about here looks good. This is not going to be perfect, but it's all right. Do not slide it around. Hold it in place with one hand and make sure you make good surface with the other. What are you doing? <laughs> now we're going to take a one inch paintbrush because you want a paintbrush that is going to, um, you're going to be able to easily work within the shape. So. And we are going to fill in, I'm just going to take right off of this little puddle of paint I have here. We are going to fill this in. And um, be mindful of dry time because you want this to be wet before you um, place your inlay on it. But that's not too difficult as long as there's not, it's not super hot and there's not a lot of air movement, you should be good. And I just fill this in. <laughs> Shane said, this is definitely a replay. It's actually not a replay. We are live right now. And I'm proving <laughs> it by saying that to you, Shane. <laughs> and getting right in there. Usually our lives will have something in it that proves it's a live that we, <laughs> that we should not have said. And that gets edited out for the YouTube. That is true. The YouTube. You oh my God. <laughs> Am so I calling old. it the YouTube? YouTube. The YouTube channel is what I meant. Okay. So we've got that in pretty good. We're going to take our piece here. Now this is optional, but you can spritz it um, on the backside to pre-expand that paper a little bit. We're not going to do that this time. We're just going to really get right in there. Lay that bad boy down on our painted W. There we go. W. Kimberly, you are so right. She said, that's the only alphabet one I don't have. I don't know why, but it's my next purchase. You have 
to have retro. It's, it's absolutely so versatile. one of our most versatile alphas. You can use it for just an outline or you can fill it in. You can do an outline and then do a sheer finish inside. And yeah. as you are seeing now, you can also fill it with patterns. So yes. it's definitely one of those must haves. We use it all the time. So I want to point out this because this technique is a little different than when you are applying an inlay to an all a solid painted surface and here's why i don't want to get in and squish a lot i don't want to add too much pressure here because if i do the wet paint underneath might go outside of the shape that i created which wouldn't be the end of the world but it's not necessary just gently get it damp and make sure that you've got good contact in your whole painted space. Nice. This is a really fun technique. And one of the things that differentiates um, inlays from say stencils um, that you can apply it here and it's only going to take in the painted area. So, all right, we're gonna leave this piece alone and we're going to remove these ones. Will this one be, that probably won't be dry by the time we get over there. No, it won't. That's okay. But we will post the finish product um, later. Yeah, in absolutely. The, so. We'll have lots of pictures yes. of it. So when you're removing, you need to get it nice and damp, but always remembering not to expose your um, exposed inlay sections to the water because it will reactivate it. Laura Lynn is asking, is your sponge barely damp or really wet? Um, I would say it's medium. Okay. Great question. Yeah, because there's definitely some some water coming off. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to... Yeah, it looks like maybe a little... A little more than I needed. I would say a needed. heavy damp is what you want. Yeah. And again, when you are doing full sheets on a solid painted surface, you are you don't have as many edges and things like that to be mindful of. So it's not as, you know, big of a thing. So, okay, fun, fun. This is the fun part. Oh. How fun is that, you stop guys? Stop it. Let's just set these aside. Oh. And remember, you always save your scraps. Oh, this is so pretty. Isn't it? It's going to be so pretty in Willow's room, you guys. It is. I have actually been saving a whole um, series of videos and photos of the evolution of Willow's nursery um, because it's not done and I don't want to reveal it until it's finished. And mm. this is one of the finishing pieces that I was waiting for. So I am beyond excited to show you guys you that. guys isn't that fun um, now this one will power dry after the video and then we will um do the finish spot if you wanted to you could go back in with your letters with a contrasting color to pop it um you can of course like having to do over i, I love this color combination but i think i might even go a little bit darker um to get more contrast between this beautiful blonde wood and the paint yeah letter. but you know what oh you probably just said this you could go in and outline yes you the, could outline yeah. it but you could use the stamp like say you chose the red or a yeah. fuchsia and use the stamp to go over to it to go back in over it yeah and you create could. an These outline are simple enough letters though that you could easily trace as well you like, totally could. i mean i'd use a sharpie yeah you totally could yeah somebody asked did you seal the the board so oh go on so so i think that um correct me if I'm wrong, it was sealed, but that was because we thought we were going to be doing a transfer on it. You don't need to seal it. You can actually do this technique um, on raw wood. Is that correct? Absolutely. And okay. in fact, what I did, because I knew it had been sealed, Erin pre prepped it for you, is I went back in with a fine sanding sponge and I knocked it down and gave it a little bit of tooth because I wanted to make sure we got good adhesion with the chalk paint and the wood. I didn't want it to be pulling up or anything mm. like that. So to recap, you can do this on raw wood. You yes. You don't have to seal it. Um, it does have a really pretty finished feel with the seal, but you could do that after yes well. you know what that's a great 
um, question, Jan. You absolutely could use a blow dryer. In fact, I would do it on a cool to warm setting in, in a case like this and do that. Mm -hmm. um, this is like so tempting for me to pull up early, but we won't do that. <laughs> Can you um, do a peek and just see? Well, no, see, no, it's, yeah, not, it's not, it's not right. the paint's all wet. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I could go put this under the speed dryer and sure. we talk for a few you more guys minutes. Want to sit, or can you so um, that way hang we with can, us for yeah. just like five minutes while we let that dry so that we can reveal it with you? Yes. And then maybe do you, do you want to sh do that thing where we outline it or do we want to leave it? Sure. What color do you want to outline it? What about white? Okay. White would go with her nursery. It's true. <laughs> Okay, well, I will just change the view here so I can see you guys. So this is super fun. We love, we just kind of came up with this idea. Um, well, the technique has been floating around in our head for a while, but we thought, Josie's idea, she said, hey, let's do another live, uh, especially because the last one was a little bit crazy, and you guys were so gracious with us and so patient, and we so appreciated it. So we thought we would pop back on and do another live. Um, we love showing you guys the techniques and we don't get nearly enough time to do that so here we are and um, i hope that you guys like this technique feel free to say in the comments like if you see yourself uh, doing this technique how would you use it because this technique is applicable in a lot of different ways you could do this um Oh gosh, I don't know. I'm going blank right off the top of my head, of course. But um, why don't you guys tell me in the comments what you think you would do with it? Because I'm sure you guys come up with better ideas than I could anyway. So I'm going to just read some of these. Oh, okay. Let me just read some questions too. So Sally said, um, and the knots won't be a problem. You know, I don't think so. It, it might take it's paint so it would be it would take differently just like a knot would take paint differently and it might have depending on the knot it might have a different texture might be a little more rough so it's just kind of um common sensey like that it's not anything technical or scientific or it's not going to take because it's this kind of paint it's just going to take in any way that a paint would take over the knots it didn't on that board. It didn't take differently. She went over the knots and it was fine. So hopefully that wasn't a confusing answer, but that is, um, I'm pretty sure how you would handle knots. Oh yes, okay, so back to the ideas of how you would use this technique. Carolyn Duncan says, a Christmas sign with holiday paint inlay. Ooh, I'm liking that idea. Of course, we'd have to come up with holiday paint inlays. Any hoozy. Um, next. <laughs> and then Tattered Design picks right up on that and says, when will your holiday stamps come out? You know that we can't tell you this, so I'm going to move on. Uh, let's see, coming in late, do you let the inlay dry before lifting it up? Yes, you do. Josie actually took it out to put the last letter, which she just completed on camera, under the dryer so that on just actually a fan, just a normal fan, um, so that she could take the inlay off on camera. So she went to do that now. So you'll get to see that. Okay. Um, let's see. Use it to add detail to a beautiful French style mirror. Ooh. Explain, Carolyn, are you saying that the inlay alpha you would use to add detail to a French style mirror? I want to hear more about what you speak of. It sounds gorgeous. Okay, Sherry asked, what stamp was that again? That was the retro stamp, and the inlay is our rose chintz inlay. Uh, let's see, Laura Lynn asked, can I, or... Can I ask what paint color you are using, please? Uh, so we actually um, don't go into brands of paint. And the reason for that is that our stockists all carry many different brands. And we don't want anyone to think that it is brand paint brand specific for this technique. So it's a beautiful uh, blue color and it is a chalk type paint. 
so I can tell you that. It'll just be about five minutes and that okay. will be dry. Awesome. This I'm just is a great Q and A opportunity. I love that. Yeah, exactly. I also asked them to share how they think they would use this technique. Ooh, yes. <laughs> That's a great read some on there because I'm not getting the YouTube comments. I'm oh, okay. only getting the Facebook. So if you have there might be some on there that we're not getting. Michelle Johnson asked. Coming in late, do you let the inlay dry oh, before lifting it up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Carolyn Holly Keller says, is there a nautical ocean inlay in the future with your products? So um, the inlay, oh, this is right in her face. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, there are always the possibilities of all of the, um, yeah, all the classic styles and icons. So I would say that is a definite possibility. Now, have you gotten our seaside stamp set? Because that is amazing. It is, um, I wouldn't pigeonhole it to nautical, but it is definitely beach. It's all the seashells, an amazing, beautiful, um, vintage um, plates, so. Oh, Wait, she can't hear very well. The, the iPhone is our sound. So we have to keep it close. Oh, okay. It can be over off to the side, just not behind us. Oh, thank you, Erin. Um, and thank you, Carolyn and Linda. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry about that. Uh, yes, and I love it. Okay, good. Because, yeah, I was going to say, you would definitely want to check that out. Um, so more, more questions. I love that you guys are picking up the inlay. What are some ways that you could use this technique? Okay, so letters aren't the, I mean, the retro stamp is fabulous for it, as you can mm -hmm. see, but you could do it with um, different shapes. So for example, say you want to make a simple heart or um, I don't know, those type mm -hmm. um, just shapes it's really popular in. doing yeah simple um kind of graphic icon shapes so anything like that that you can draw and then paint in um you can use it with so i've seen ones with that are like a sunset um mm -hmm. in the hills oh um, i see what you're saying almost kind of like a brown bear brown bear um vibe like the children's books where they fill in with pattern. Okay, yeah. So you can do like collages with pattern. That yes. would be neat. That's popular Ooh, right now. That would be fun, Carolyn. Ooh, really fun yeah. outside house numbers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rust Age Aboard. Tatter Design says, I'm going to Rust Age Aboard and try this inlay. I love that. This, oh, don't you love the contrast of like rust, rust? I have Ooh, my, yeah. all my railings are rusted iron. Um, in a vintage um, picket, um, and, but yes, so rust and that decrepit texture mixed mm -hmm. with something that's- With a beautiful dainty floral. Yes. Yes, we it's love that. that beautiful contrast that actually is how we came up with our name Iron Orchid. That's right, we love contrast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so juxtaposing those is just so visually interesting. It's not um, predictable. So, hello, Annie. Annie, our Canadian distributor, joined us. Yes. It's good to see you. Hello. <laughs> that is, I'm going to run Rest back and, and get tattered. that. Me too. I will be right well, back. your name is Tattered Design, so of course you do. <laughs> I think all our people, though, do, don't we? This community, we just love vintage and aged and worn and chipped and all those things. And Honestly, I think that there is a part of all of us that is attracted to that and and vintage in general, attracted to vintage and drawn to it. And I think it's kind of the familiar and um, things that have depth of character and a story. There's a story there with things that are vintage and the those characteristics of the age and the wear and the chippiness just draw you into what is the story? Um, at least that's how it is for me. Let me know in the comments if that's how it is for you guys, too. Okay, do you want to? All right, yeah. Um, Let's switch it back. Switch it back, and we'll take the W off. Okay. It's The camera's a little slow, so give it a sec. Okay. 
and we are going to grab some of that damp. This is nice and dry. Let's get it nice and damp. It should never pull your uh, paper like so much that it's going to tear. There we go. There we go. Yay, that is so it's fun. finished. Did you bring the white paint for I outlining? Did. I sure did. Oh, it's great. right here. And okay. I brought a second brayer. Excellent. So we will put some. So we're going to stamp right here. Now we're going to stamp over each letter to just pop the letters against the board a, a wee bit more. It looks beautiful as it is, honestly, but I think um, I think that will just add to it. Yeah, let's see what happens. Let's see what, ha we're gonna see what happens and you guys tell us if you liked it. Yeah. This way more. A is before, B is after. So yeah. tell us if you, or you can just say before or after. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to overcomplicate things. <laughs> yes, so let's move this, they cannot see. Smooth. Trying to get this in camera. Oh, the white one. Yeah. There. There we go. Okay. That'll do. It is for baby Willow Annie. Yes, it's for her nursery. And I was saying before you came in, I was just saying that I am waiting for the finishing touches to her room to just create a. Um, some content, maybe a blog post, maybe a video about the process of her room. Okay, now, this is, I don't think, I don't know that I've ever done an overstamped one, but we're gonna see how, I don't see why how well I do it. <laughs> oh, is that so? <laughs> Hello, Charlotte. Is that so, Peanut Gallery? <laughs> If not you ruin shipping. it, it is all on you. This is not. It was your idea to do this <laughs> on the fly without any heads up. Woo, cute. That is cute. That is cute. Okay. So since I've already got this one yeah, done up. I'll do this. Yeah. I'll do the letters in front of me and you can do the letters in I front feel of like, you. I feel like fuchsia would have been pretty too. It would It would have. have not as soft. Like Willa's colors are more soft. But yeah. I'm just saying. Yes. Let me move this into the camera better. Her her um, room color, you guys, for her walls is one of my favorite wall colors I have ever found. And I will um, find the name of it for you when I post that post. Yes. Because um, it's the softest pink. It's like a soft blush pink, but it's so soothing and yes. calming um anyway it, it's going to be gorgeous with this sign it's a sherwin see. williams color i believe somebody asked is that a is is that a stamp the w yes ma'am it is a stamp it's, it's the our retro, retro. wow stamp. <laughs> and we'll get let's get we've got all of the other oops sorry guys okay There we go. Fabulous. Just a little pop. Okay, so I'm going to move these. Save all your scraps, guys, because yes. you can use them again. Even with the letters um, portion being used, mm -hmm. you for distress projects, mixed media projects, you don't have to have them be perfect. Okay, so let's pull divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. says, do you, I don't have a mounting didn't cut another mounting piece because where's that Here, w you do that o. where's the w it's right there no 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 the oh, one. We had two. Oh, here it is okay i'll do the o <laughs> you do the ones in front of you and i'll do the one in front yes of me. i like using a piece of this to mount here we sally go. goes freestyle a lot i do that's right and that's what i will be doing but I prefer using. And we're not cleaning our stamps in between, um, but you could and should, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You probably get a little smoother. Yeah, you probably a... get a little smoother. But we're kind of liking that rustic look. Yeah. 
And honestly, what's kind of nice about this last part, um, stamping over is, and we've done this before where we stamp over and you don't have to be straight on. Like it's okay if there's a little bit that goes beyond the line, it, it looks like it's intentional. Yes. It just looks like part of the design. So that's kind of nice too. There's some, there's a lot of forgiveness there. Totally. And um, if you're working with a color that you can just, you know, touch up, if you miss a spot, you can use a marker to catch it up. I've done that. Okay. Always remember, if your pieces are not clean enough, you will have issues with the stamp clinging well to your mounting surface. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, clean it and uh, no biggie. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Carolyn said there should be suspenseful music playing while you do this. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Mm. <laughs> no. Mm, no. That, what? what? <laughs> Sorry. Please, Aaron. <laughs> He's always the peanut gallery. He He's, is. Please clean your stamps. LOL. <laughs> Well, he sees the fallout. He does. He does. Because he sees them. Yeah. You should take good care of your stamps. Yes. Better than. Better than we do. Am I on there? Yeah. The camera, when you're looking straight down over, it's actually pretty easy to. Yeah. To line it up. It's just that the, the our overhead camera is right in the way of my head. So I can't really get in there and get my head looking straight down over it, but I think it's all right. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, that is that cute. It totally one, yeah. pops it. It does. I love it. So what do you guys think? Before or after? Right. Yes, I am curious. What color is the background color or is that the inlay? That color is, it's like a really a muted um, green blue. Very mm -hmm. muted green blue, and you can choose any background color for this. So mm -hmm. that's what makes it so fun because this is going along the color scheme. After, mm -hmm. after, after seems to be the win. Now okay. I did tell Sally that I, did I see thought one before, and Cheryl said before. So there's a couple okay, that couple did before. like it before, and honestly, I'm torn. I yeah. feel like I like it both ways. The before had a much more, I don't know, there was something about it that felt soft, soft. And then, yeah. but this, it's it stands definitely, out. it pops more. Yeah. I feel like the value of um, the blue and the wood is not, the value difference contrast could be better, could be more. Um, in order for this to stand out more. Now you could have achieved that by using white as your, cause this is like low medium on like, if you went from white to black and all the values in between, this is gonna be in the low to medium range. And same with this is a little darker than that. But if you went um, higher contrast, so either like mm -hmm. really light or white or really dark. In fact, I said, Sally, um, a pink floral like this would look so pretty against black too. And black would have worked even, mm -hmm. but for the case of Willow's bedroom, it didn't work with the Decor. color scheme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, somebody asked, are you going to do anything else to the board? I don't think so. Yeah. The board is yeah. really a nice. I don't now we'll so. seal it and that's going to pop those letters even more. And we'll mm -hmm. show that end finish. But look at the, let's, I love getting these really, Nice shots yes. up close. What do you guys think? Isn't that fun? It's definitely got it's that so beautiful sweet. cottage. Cottage, yes. Oh, okay. It. That's it. So Teresa Bannon says, after the before gave the illusion of being uneven or wonky to me. And you know what? I bet that is because wherever there, the floral was not, the, the defining edges weren't as bold. So, mm -hmm. for example, you had, like, the bulk of the color mm -hmm. is up here on the O, but down here on the L. 
Mm -hmm. and then your edges would get a little more lost, mm -hmm. making it seem uneven. That's a great point, too. Okay, I'm just going to pop this over here so we can we can say goodbye. Here, we'll, <laughs> we'll do this. We'll that do way that. they can still hear us, but it's not right we'll in our face. Our sweet sign. Yes. So this is, oh, hello. <laughs> This is what we made today, you guys. I hope you liked our inlay alpha technique. We used our rose chintz inlay and our retro stamp. Uh, thank you so much for joining us a second time today. It was so much fun to have you guys with us and chat with you about your thoughts on everything. And we will see you soon. Yes. Okay. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes, and like, follow. subscribe, follow, all the things. So you get notified when we come yeah. out and you can join us. Especially when we do it last minute and without telling anybody. <laughs> okay, you guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Mwah.